In section 2.7, you're going to write and graph absolute value functions and use transformations. In this first example, we're going to graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3 and compare that graph with the graph of the parent function f of x equals the absolute value of x. To graph this absolute value equation, we want to make a table of values. And in that table of values, we want to put our vertex. Now our vertex is our hk value from our equation. We can pick out that vertex, that high point or low point for this absolute value equation just by looking at the equation. h is 1 and k is 3. H is what's ever subtracted from x, and k is what's ever added to absolute value. So 1, 3 is our vertex, and I can put that in our table of values, and I can graph it on the coordinate plane, 1, 3. Now I know that this V shape is going to open up because our A value is positive 1. When our A value is positive, we know the V shape will open up on the coordinate plane, if our a value were negative, we know that our v shape would open downward. Now I need to know how wide to graph this v shape, so I'm going to choose values for x on either side of that vertex. I'm going to choose negative 1 and positive 3. I chose them equally spaced on either side of the vertex, so I, I expect that the y coordinates uh, will be the same. Negative 1, and positive 3. Okay, letting x equal negative 1 in our equation, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, but the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So I have the point negative 1, 5 on this V shape that's opening up. So I'll go ahead and graph negative 1, 5 in the second quadrant. And then I'll put 3 in for x. 3 minus 1 is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is 2, and 2 plus 3 is 5. So you can see that those y values are the same for the two points that I'm graphing to determine the width of this absolute value v shape. And now I can go ahead and draw my v shape through those three points on the coordinate plane. I want to compare the graph with the graph of f of x equals the absolute value of x, uh, again, which is the parent function. And the parent function is centered at the origin, and the only difference between this function and the parent function is that this function is translated one unit right and three units up. Our vertex isn't at the origin, it's at 1, 3. So we'll say that it's translated one unit right and three units up. from parent function. Okay, in the next example, we're going to graph another absolute value equation, y equals 1 fourth, the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2. And we're going to compare the graph with the graph of the parent function again, f of x equals the absolute value of x. So again, we're going to make a table of values. And in that table of values, we're going to put the vertex. And 
Again, this time our h and k value from our equation determines the vertex, and our h value is negative 3. It's whatever subtracted from x, so we'd want to think of x plus 3 is x minus a negative 3. Negative 3 is our h value, and our k value is negative 2. So our vertex in our table of values is negative 3, negative 2, and we can go ahead and graph that vertex, negative 3, negative 2 in the third quadrant. Now again, this V shape is opening up because our A value is positive. Our A value is positive 1 fourth. So now when I choose values for X on either side of my vertex, I might choose negative 1, 2, 3. Let's choose negative 5 and negative 1. Again, I'm choosing them equally spaced on either side of the vertex. So because these V shapes are symmetric about some vertical axis of symmetry, I can expect my Y values to be the same. Okay, so I'll put negative 5 into the uh, function. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, and the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half, and 1 half minus 2 is negative 1 and 1 half. So I'll go ahead and graph negative 5, negative 1 and 1 half on the coordinate plane, and then I'll put negative 1 into the function for x. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. 2 times 1 fourth is 1 half, and 1 half minus 2 again is negative 1 and 1 half. So now I'm graphing negative 1, negative 1 and 1 half. And when I draw my V shape, you can see that it opens much wider than the last V shape that I graphed where my A value was positive 1. Now my A value is positive 1 fourth. This is not only causing a translation left 3 units and down 2 from the parent function, but it's also causing a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 fourth, and, and our V shape is wider because of that A value equaling 1 fourth. So we'll say that we translate left three units and down two units. and there's a vertical shrink compared to the parent, parent function. In this example, we're going to write an absolute value function. We're going to go the other direction. A landscaper sketches the design for a triangular shrub protector on graph paper. Write an equation for the shrub protector. Okay, so we need some units on our, our graph here. So here's our origin, and let's go 4, 8, 12, 16 along our x-axis. And along our y-axis, we'll just go 2, 4, 6, 8. So that vertex for this V-shape 
is sitting at 5, 6 on the coordinate plane. And this V shape passes through uh, the origin or one of the vertices of this triangular shape is sitting at the origin. The coordinates that name this vertex of this triangular shape is 10, uh, 0. Now when we write an equation for this V shape, we're going to write it in that standard form, y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Now remember, hk is our vertex, so we can pick that out right away. We know that our h value is 5 and our k value is 6. So we could plug those into our equation. We need to find this a value. So to find the a value, we're going to use one of the points that's on our, our V shape, which is either 0, 0 or 10, 0. And since zeros are so easy to use, I'm going to put 0 in for y into our equation. We're going to solve for a. In for x, I'm going to put 0. In for h, remember, I'm going to put 5. And in for k, 6. So all I have to do now is solve for a. So on the right hand side, I have 0 minus 5 inside absolute value. That's negative 5, but the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So this term becomes 5a. And if I'm solving for a, I'm going to subtract that 6 from both sides to get 5a alone. And the last step will be to divide both sides by 5. So we find out that a is equal to negative 6 fifths. And now I can write my equation because I have my a value and I have my h and k value. So the equation for this v shape is y equals negative 6 fifths times the absolute value of x minus h, which is 5, plus k, which is 6. And you can see that our a value is negative, which means our v shape is opening downward. And because the absolute value of this a value, negative 6 fifths, is positive 6 fifths and greater than 1, this v shape is very narrow. It's narrow compared to the, the parent function. Include in your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 3 found on page 125 of your textbook.